Australia's stock market can be broken down into three segments. You have your cyclicals, your sensitives, and finally your defensives. This relates to how they behave when the economy changes. During a recession, your cyclical investments will probably sink, while your defensives will hold strong and should see a much more moderate drop. A well-diversified portfolio should have exposure across the spectrum. In this video, I'll be sharing the highest paying dividend stocks in Australia across all three buckets. Specifically, the 10 subsectors you can see here, which fit neatly under the segments. I applied a couple rules to get to this point. Firstly, I'm only looking at Australian stocks. You won't find any Kiwi stocks here. Secondly, I only want to see companies with a market cap of over 10 million Australian dollars. We want to see Australia's biggest and brightest companies. Thirdly, these stocks should have paid a dividend reliably for the past 10 years, without fail. We're here to invest in dividends, so we don't want any part-timers. And finally, I've filtered out any companies that have seen their stock price fall by more than 10% over the past year. Dividend yield traps are nobody's friend here. So let's kick off with our cyclical sectors. These guys are seriously affected by the state of the economy. When the going's good, expect them to soar. When the going's bad, on the other hand, these guys will feel the pain quickly. We have three subsectors here basic materials, consumer cyclicals, and financials. In the basic material space, we have five companies. The world's second largest mining giant, Rio Tinto, takes out the highest dividend yield at 6.21%. It is currently trading near its one-year lows, but its dividends have been reliable for several decades. With a market capitalization of $173 billion, it is among the most valuable companies on this list. Second in the basic materials space is the fertilizer and explosives giant, Insitec Pivot, with a yield of 3.06%. They have seen steady growth in their stock price this year on the back of healthy financial performance. They have a $6 billion market cap, and with just a small blip during the COVID times, they have paid a dividend every year since the mid-2000s. Third up is Brambles, another giant on the Australian exchange with a market cap in excess of $25 billion. They operate in the supply chain space, sharing and reusing pallets and containers to increase efficiencies and decrease wastage in their sector. They offer investors a yield of 2.81% at the moment. Their financial performance is climbing back to pre-COVID levels, and they've been paying dividends since the late 90s. Their stock price has been doing well too, up roughly 20% over the past year. Now let's take a look at the consumer cyclical space, starting with Corvest. Operating in South Australia for over 50 years, these guys are one of the largest manufacturers of cable and pipe support systems and galvanizing services. They offer a healthy dividend of 6.42% at present. Their stock price is up roughly 20% this year, the business performance is doing really well, and they've been paying dividends since before I was born, especially so in recent years. Following them is the GWA Group, which is a leading Australasian supplier of kitchen and bathroom fixtures. These are sold through the brands Coroma, Dorf, Methbin, and Clark. They're paying a hefty dividend on current pricing of about 6.41%, despite seeing their stock price increase 25% over the past year. Sales are up while profits are heading down, but their history of paying dividends is sound, only missing a couple payments about a decade ago. And the third consumer cyclical stock is Ascent, a $1.3 billion retailer that has appeared on some of my other videos. If you have bought shoes in Australia or New Zealand over the past 30 odd years, chances are you've spent some coin with these guys. They're currently paying a dividend yield of 5.63%. Sales are going up, the stock price is steady, and the dividends have been flowing. The pandemic did not slow these guys down. Let's now explore our final cyclical sector, financials. It's hard to lose money in this space, and of the 158 companies that met my screening criteria, over half of them were financial stocks. Topping the list was Centuria Office, a real estate investment trust offering a whopping 10.3% yield. It hasn't been a great year for Centuria, with their stock price sliding 5% and profits hitting negative. Real estate can be a hard business, and these guys definitely come with a bit of risk. Dividends are also a question, having slid for several recent years, so let's skip ahead here. Second up is Wham Capital, an investment holding company that acquires undervalued growth stocks based in Australia. Their investment objective is to deliver investors a steady stream of fully franked dividends at an average annualized rate of 10.3% according to their website. 
Over the past year, Stockopedia puts this at 9.81%. Their stock price has slid slightly over the past year, and their dividend payout has been steady over the past 10 or so years. And after them, we have WAM Research, which is a separate fund to WAM Capital that we just looked at. It isn't clear from their website what the difference is between the two, but their dividend yield still stacks up. Their website boasts a 9% dividend yield, but over the past year, Stockopedia puts this at 8.55%. Their stock price has held well over the past year, and its dividend payout has remained steady, increasing over the past decade. But that's just the cyclical segment. Let's now go to the other extreme, which is the defensive sectors. These include healthcare, utilities, and consumer defensive stocks. Whether the economy is doing well or poorly, their customers still need to spend on maintaining their health, keeping their utilities going, or buying groceries, for example. A handbrake in the good times, a lifeboat during the bad times. So let's first take a look at the healthcare sector, starting with Vita Life Sciences. Vita is a vitamin manufacturer with three leading brands in Australia and Asia, including Vita Health, Vita Science and Herbs of Gold. They offer investors a current yield of 4.19%, even on the back of a 45% appreciation in their stock price over the past year. Their financials are growing well, and their dividends are on a generally upwards track. Following Vita, we have Monash IVF, which as the name suggests, operates in the fertility space. They have a market cap of over $400 million and a yield of 4.1%. Their stock has slid 7% over the past year, interrupting what was otherwise a fairly steady five years. Sales are slowly climbing, while their dividends are rather flat, even declining since 2015. And third up in the healthcare space, we have SDI, which manufactures and sells specialist dental materials in over 100 countries globally. They are valued at just over $100 million and offer investors a yield of 3.74%. Their stock price is steady, their financial performance is improving, and dividends have continued to grow over the past decade. Following healthcare, we have the utility sector. Of Australia's 18 listed utility companies, just one met our screening criteria, and that is AGL Energy. AGL is one of Australia's three largest power retailers, involved in its generation and retailing to residential and commercial users. Offering a very healthy yield of 5.28%, a steady stock price, but temperamental profitability, AGL has consistently offered dividends since the early 90s. The past few years have been a bit rough, however, but they look to be climbing back to their pre-pandemic heights. Consumer defensives offer us a bit more variety, with Shine Justice at the top of the list, offering a dividend of 6.75%. Shine is a holding company for a stable of legal firms, as you can see here, and rain or shine, lawyers will always be busy. Their stock price has seen a recent surge over the past month. However, their financial performance has slid over the past couple years. Their dividends are on an upwards trajectory, however, though we should be cautious as the company's performance has not been great of late. Next up is Rice Growers, a common stock to appear in my dividend videos. They offer a dividend yield of 6.29%, and as their name suggests, they sell rice. If you've seen this brand around, then you know them. Their stock is a racehorse. Their financial performance has been exceptional, and since listing in 2019, they have managed to increase their dividend overall. And our third consumer defensive stock is Coles, a major supermarket almost every Australian will know. Coles offer their investors a yield of 3.7% on current pricing. Their stock has also had a good run over the past year. Over five years though, it hasn't really gone anywhere. Their sales are slightly climbing, and their dividends have remained steady since listing in 2018. A whopping 85% of my viewers are yet to subscribe. Are you one of them? Make sure to hit that button down below to see more videos just like this. So we have taken a look at cyclical and defensive segments. Let's now take a look at the middle ground sensitive sectors, including energy, industrials, telecoms, and technology sectors. Unfortunately, of 113 energy stocks in Australia, none of them met our screening criteria. 85 stocks were valued above $10 million. Just 14 offered a dividend, and of that, only four had consistently paid a dividend, and neither New Hope, Woodside, Ampol, or Beach Energy saw their stock price hold over the past year. If you wanted to risk getting into a dividend trap, 
they each offer a yield, as you see here, of between 3.5 and 8.8%. So let's move along. Topping the list of industrial stocks, we have Sugar Terminals, with a dividend yield of 7.31%. Unfortunately, as some of my subscribers have informed me in the past, retail investors can't obtain these stocks without being in the industry. It's a shame, as it's a great stable stock, so we'll skip them and go straight to Liquor Podium. When you have a large scale and complex engineering project, these are the guys that you want on your side. The stock offers a healthy dividend yield of 6.5%, and while their stock has appreciated a healthy 10% or so over the past year, it's much more extraordinary when you zoom out to 10 years. Their financial performance is very healthy, and their dividends have grown substantially over the past decade. Second up is SG Fleet, which as their name suggests, they help businesses manage complex vehicle fleets. In Australia alone, they manage a reported 250,000 vehicles. The stock offers a yield on current pricing of 6.42%, and their stock has performed well over the past year. Their financial performance is growing and their dividends have remained steady over the past decade. And third, in the industrial space, we have logistics operator K&S Corporation. With over 3,000 logistics vehicles and 2,000 staff, they are no small company with a market cap of nearly half a billion dollars. Despite their stock increasing 44% over the past year, they still manage a very respectable dividend yield of 5.14%. Their profitability has grown over recent years, and that's now reflected in their increasing dividend payouts. Moving along now to telecom stocks, again, just one stock meets our high standards here. Telstra. With a market cap of $45 billion, they need no introduction and offer investors a dividend yield of 4.6%. Telstra's stock price has remained steady over the past year, despite their financial performance obviously remaining fairly flat. As a steady company with fairly dependable revenue, their dividends reflected this with a fairly stable payout between 2005 and 2017, and again from then onwards to today. So without more to cover under telecoms, let's move to our final sector, technology. Topping the list here is Dicker Data, which distributes a broad range of IT products and services around Australasia. With a market cap of $1.6 billion and a dividend yield of 5.25%, they are no small player in this space. Their stock price has fallen roughly 8% for the year, despite stable and even improving financials. Their dividend payments have been climbing, however, and paying out pretty much all of their earnings each year as dividends. Following them, we have Reckon, which builds and distributes payroll and accounting software to accountants, of course, and small businesses. Currently, they offer investors a dividend yield of 4.81%. Their stock price has slid throughout the year, their financial performance has certainly slid, but their dividend cover has remained healthy and payments have actually increased over the past year. And our third technology stock is Data3, a software, IT infrastructure and service business. Operating since 1984, they offer a current dividend yield of 3.29%. Their stock price has returned to roughly where it was about a year ago, despite their revenue taking a major dive in 2024. Despite this, they have managed to increase dividends since about 2005, and their cash and equity position has remained steady throughout this. If you like the software that I used in today's video, please make sure to check out Stockopedia down below in the pinned comments. Using my link, you'll get 20% off and you get access to a free trial as well if you want to try them out first. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.